What is good, my peeps? It's the Ruckus back at you again. Happy holidays to you. Hope you all had a wonderful and joyous holiday season. If you are watching this during that time of year, meaning December 2023, I hope you all are doing well. You see what we got going on? We're not even going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. What you're looking at is a figure from the last wave from Marvel Legends for year 2023. This is the Void Builder Figure Wave. Officially an Avengers wave, if you will. And uh, some of you out there may be asking, uh, who the hell is Chris Star? Chris Star is a character not of the Marvel Universe. It is a Marvel property, however, that uh, did uh, have his own comic for a time. Uh, I believe, I want to say it was back in the 80s. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was never part of mainstream Marvel 616 or multiverse or anything like that. Uh, and, uh, Hasbro is kicking off their, uh, campaign of bringing these characters to us. Characters like Chris Star. We're going to get, um, other characters that, uh, aren't necessarily part of the Marvel universe, but, um, yeah, we've got it kicked off with Chris Star. Uh, we've got the builder figure wave of the void. Uh, any of you who know of the void, you know that that is the uh, the second uh, personality of Robert Reynolds, aka the Sentry. And uh, yeah, pretty powerful, pretty uh, pretty disgusting kind of bad guy. We'll see what he's all about when we amass all of the f uh, the pieces and put the void together. But first, let us uh, check out the packaging as it uh, spins around on our rotating base. You see we're back to the window, the plastic packaging. You can see the figure and the accessories and the build a figure piece within. And uh, you see that side art of Kristar. And uh, we've got that art, same art, only more, uh, more of it on the back, as well as uh, the return of little bios. And we've got uh, all of the figures in the wave and a sketch of the builder figure wave of the builder figure, excuse me, down below. So right now we'll take uh, we'll take the packaging off of our base to get a uh, a look at that uh, you know all sides there. Okay, we've got our figure off of the rotating base and as much out of my lighting as uh, you know is. Uh, possible without uh, totally uh, removing the figure itself, the packaging itself. You see the uh, the figure within, you've got the accessories and uh, the uh, Build-A-Figure piece. Turning to one side, you've got some of that artwork of Kristar, as I stated before. On the other side, the same thing. When we turn to the back, you've got that full artwork of uh, Kristar. It reads above it, Marvel's Kristar. Um, like I said, it is a Marvel property. It just isn't, he just isn't really part of the Marvel Universe. I'm doing a quotation marks off camera, of course. And we do get that readout. Kristar, Prince of Crystallium, leads an elite team of crystal warriors against the threat of chaos. Pretty vague. Uh, you look below to our lower left, we have an image of the void uh, assembled. And then to the our right, we have all of the figures that are in this wave. We've got Power Princess. We've got Justice, the Vision, Namorita, Namor in his savage uh, kind of uh, appearance. And we have the Black Panther, which does not come with a Build-A-Figure piece. So if you want to, you can skip out on that. Kristar comes with the two gnarliest pieces for uh, building the Void, uh, the Void's tentacles, which uh, if you could see, it's got uh, pegs that it'll fit into the Void's back. They are not articulated at all, so once they get back there, that's that's how they'll be. The position that you see them in is the position they'll be in when the time comes. As far as Kristar's accessories, he comes out of packaging with a left open hand and a right fist. He comes with additional uh, hands. These are both sea grippers, grasping hands, and that's because he also comes with a uh, clear shield. He is a crystalline warrior, of course, so you can see right through it. 
with the handle and everything like that so he does come with that and excuse that knock of my camera and then he also comes with his crystalline sword which is a uh, pretty nice if I say so for myself it is of course you know transparent just like the shield is very very nice let's take a look at Chris Starr get a 360 degree v visual of him outside of his packaging you can see it's just basically crystalline transparent plastic and red red gloves uh, red uh, we'll call them undies the uh, red knee-high boots and uh, of course he's got uh, a crystalline helmet with uh, red accoutrements as in red uh, uh, wings on the uh, sides and a uh, a red uh, well, I, I'll call it a crest at the top of it so uh, yeah you see what it's looking like it looks pretty good um, from what I've already messed with the uh, problem that I'm sure a lot of you are asking is when it comes to these transparent see-through figures, how gummy are the joints? They feel nice. They feel great, especially the legs. I was mostly concerned that the legs would uh, be kind of gummy, and they are not, so that's pretty cool. Of course, the caveat, the con to having a uh, see-through figure is you can actually see the uh, you know where the joints connect at, but that's part of it you know so it is what it is taking a better look at Chris Star off the base and a little bit closer up once again you could see uh, looking at that uh, the head sculpt um, of course being crystalline it's hard to make out his features but they are there uh, let me uh, try to uh, zero in on that for you guys so here you can get a better idea of what uh, he actually looks like he does have features, as you could see, eyes, nose, mouth, whatever. Uh, while we're here this close, you could see the crest on uh, his helmet. There, it is uh, like a, uh, a uh, almost a diamond shape, and then there's a, uh, a rectangular object at the center of it. And then, of course, you've got the uh, wings on the side of the helmet. Uh, you know, paying his ode to uh, to Thor. <laughs> when you uh, when you uh, think about it, he uh, he and Thor share that in common: wings on the side of their helmet. And uh, while we're here, you may as well see uh, right there at his chest. There's uh, a, there's something round. It's like a chest plate, and uh, it isn't. It is not. It is not, this is not, the torso is not a reuse of Iron Man, so don't think that this, uh, whatever's going on with his chest is uh, almost like a hexagon in there. It's got corners, as you can see, and um, yeah, but there is that detail. Going down for a little bit more detail, I had mentioned about his red uh, undies. He's got a crystal uh, emblem right there at the center, and um, it's transparent, as you can see. It looks uh, looks pretty good. So, um, you know, for this to be just basically uh, clear plastic and red, this this came out this came out pretty nice. Checking out Chris Dar's articulation. His head is on a uh, ball hinge. It's not going to go back that far because his helmet is knocking into his shoulders back there. So that's as far up as you're getting going back in terms of looking up, looking down. He can do the doggone thing, as you could see. He can just frown big time. Uh, uh, if he were defeated, of course, he can twist 360. You're not really getting you're getting some pivot, but not much there. Uh, as far as his uh, shoulders are concerned, he can T pose it. He can go 360. He does not have any butterfly joints, so there's no rear and back except, uh, you know, obviously just a you know, reverse inverted T pose. That's about it. He's got the. Uh, He's got the uh, bicep swivel, double jointed, pinless uh, elbows, looking nice there. They are pinless, right? You got to double check with these things because he's a uh, crystalline, but yeah, they're pinless. Uh, he's got the rotating wrists and uh, horizontal hinge, both sides, even the fist, and uh, his extra grasping hands. They have the vertical, they have the vertical uh, hinges going on for there. As far as uh, the ab crunch is concerned. He can crunch forward this far, 
which is decent. It's impeded because of that uh, emblem on his uh, undies. He can go back that far. So pretty nice. He's got a waist swivel. So you see right there. He can uh, uh, do uh, the splits straight up Van Dam style, as you can see. He's got, uh, he can kick forward this far, about 90, go back that much. He's got the thigh cut, pretty smooth too, the thigh cut is. He's got double jointed pinless uh, knees, so that's very nice there. There's no swivel at this boot. You're going to have to go right down there. There's no swivel down below either, so, but he can uh, kick his uh, toe forward that far, pretty nice. And go up decently, I guess, and uh, he does have... Uh, ankle pivot, and you know what time it is. It's been a minute, but we're back. Holes, peg holes at the bottom of his feet. Here's a look at Chris Dar wielding his shield and sword there. And yeah, pretty decent figure. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a nice figure. Um, some of you may not be with it because it's not a 616 product. You know what I'm saying? And totally, when it comes to obscure characters, I think you can get no more obscure than a character like this. We're going to be seeing others, I believe, you know, that um, Marvel has done before. And uh, so um, it's something that's interesting. So, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased. But uh, I'm already talking like this is the end of the video. Not quite. I can't conclude the review unless I have a comparison of something. And with Chris Dar, it was uh, the only thing I could think of to try to play the comparison game with would be Iceman um, because uh, that's the closest to being able to see through. And uh, so, yeah, so I went with this uh, version and also uh, talk about Gummy. This guy is straight up Gummy for real. But, um, yeah, there you have it. That closest thing I can come up with to compare with Chris Dar. So now, wrapping up this review of Chris Dar from the Avengers Void Build-A-Figure Wave, the last wave of 2023. And uh, the first figure that I'm reviewing, as well as being the first figure of uh, Hasbro's new campaign to bring us non-Marvel 616 or Marvel Universe or MCU uh, related figures, uh, but of properties that they do own, this being Chris Dar, the Crystalline Warrior, and uh, pretty nice figure, it's plain, obviously it's just clear plastic and red all over the place, accessories, comes with a set of uh, graspers and a, a crystalline sword and shield, and uh, yeah, he looks, uh, he looks pretty nice, and uh, Articulation is, uh, you know, what you expect. Sans the uh, lack of um, butterfly joints. I, for one, would like to see butterfly joints just be standard on um, whatever uh, whatever buck that um, is required for a character. But that's just me. Anyway, um, this is the first review in a series of seven for the Void build a figure i should technically say series of eight because once we get through all of the figures we're going to uh do a little uh uh connect up and a review of the void himself when we get to him um but uh, we have to be patient because uh, i don't really have the entire wave they're coming in piecemeal i do have a figure that i'm going to be reviewing next that you guys uh will definitely be here for so um stay tuned for that uh, what you can do in the meantime, in between time, is hit that like button, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. And uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Uh, you can uh, leave comments in that section below. What do you think about Chris Dar? Are you with it? Are you with uh, this new kind of direction that has was going to be taken with some of the Marvel properties, the lesser known Marvel properties that are not part of uh, the Marvel Universe proper, if you will. Let me know how you feel about that. You want to be notified the next time I upload a video, hit that notification bell down below and you will be notified of that as well. Until the next time, my peeps, you know how we do it. Do all of that. Peep the review. Do the comments, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, that's how it gets done.